And in this section, we're going to look at frequency tables. A frequency is the number of times a value of the data occurs. Example 1, we want to construct a frequency table. 20 students were asked how many hours they work per day. Their responses in hours are as follows. Now there's a couple responses. Some people said they work 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours, and 7 hours. So these are the only responses and we have inserted it into our data table. Now the frequency is the number of times that data value occurs. For 2 hours we have 3 individuals responded 2 hours so the frequency is 3. For 3 hours we have 5 individuals who responded 3 hours so the frequency is 5. Now let's pause the video and fill in the rest of the table. The frequency for 5 hours is 6. The frequency for 6 hours is 2. And finally, the frequency for 7 hours is just 1. Now we can easily check our work by making sure the total frequency is equal to 20 students since we know there were 20 data values. So you can quickly add 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1 and making sure that's equal to 20 and we know we did it correctly. A relative frequency is the ratio, fraction or proportion of the number of times a value of the data occurs in the set of all outcomes to the total number of outcomes. In order to calculate the relative frequency, we need this formula. The relative frequency is equal to the frequency divided by the total frequency. And remember, this number is a fraction or percentage. Cumulative relative frequency is the accumulation of the previous relative frequencies. To calculate the cumulative relative frequency, we need to add previous values together. So let's look at an example with these definitions. We're going to use the same values we had in our previous example. Now to calculate the relative frequency, we need to find the frequency and divided by the total frequency. So we're going to take the 3 and divide it by the total which is 20. I'm gonna take the 5 and divide it by 20 and I will do that through the entire column. Taking each of the frequencies and dividing it by the total. So this represents our relative frequency. I can also convert each of these values into a decimal by using a calculator. 3 divided by 20 is 0 0.15. 5 divided by 20 is 0 0.25. 3 divided by 20 is 0 0.15. 6 divided by 20 is 0 0.30. 2 divided by 20 is 0 0.10. And 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05. And that's the column for relative frequency. I could always check my work and add up all of these values and the total should be 1. So make sure you add up all these values to check that the total is indeed 1. Why does the total for the relative frequency have to add up to 1? Well, that's because the total should be equivalent to 100% or 1.
To calculate the cumulative frequency, we need to do addition. So I'm going to start by copying the first frequency, and that starts at 3. For the next cumulative frequency, we need to add the 3 plus 5 together. 3 plus 5 is going to give us 8, and so that's the entry for the second row. For the third row, we're going to take the 8, and then we're going to add the additional frequency 3. 8 plus 3 gives us 11. And then for the next one, I'm going to take the 11 and add the 6. 11 plus 6 gives us 17. And then we'll do 17 plus 2, and that gives us 19. And finally, 19 plus the 1, that gives us 20. Now the total has to be 20 because we know we had 20 individuals surveyed. To calculate the cumulative relative frequency, we do the same process. Instead of working with frequency, we use the relative frequency column. We will begin by copying the first relative frequency, which is 0 0.15. Then, in the next row, we'll take 0 0.15 and we'll add the next relative frequency, which is 0 0.25. And this gives us a value of 0 0.40. For the next relative frequency, for the next cumulative relative frequency, we're going to take the 0 0.40 and add it with the relative frequency here, 0 0.15. And this adds up to 0 0.55. I'll take 0 0.55 and add it with the relative frequency 0 0.30. And this gives us 0 0.85. And we'll continue the process. 0 0.85 plus 0 0.10 equals 0 0.95. And finally, 0 0.95 plus 0 0.05 is equal to exactly 1. And the outcome should be exactly 1 because the total should add up to 1 or 100%. Example, 250 people are asked how many siblings they have. In this problem, we are given a table with some blank values and we want to figure out what those values are. Let's look at what we know. We know there's 250 people surveyed, so the total frequency must be 250. So the total must be 250 people. I know the relative frequency has to add up to 1 because it must be equivalent to 100%. Let's try the problem out. I'm going to start by adding 44, 65, 42, and 52 together. And the total is 203. We know this part adds to 203. Now the question is, what does this have to be so that the total is 250? We will take 250 and subtract 203 from it, and we get 47. So this must be 47. To find the missing relative frequency, I'm going to take these numbers and add them up. And let's do that on the side. And the total is 0 0.832. To calculate the missing relative frequency, I'm going to subtract that number from 1. 1 minus 0 0.832 
gives us a value of 0 0.168. So the missing relative frequency must be 0 0.168. Now I could check my work by adding all these numbers up and they should add up to 1. Same thing for the frequency column. I should be able to add up all of these numbers here and it should add up to 250. To find the missing cumulative frequency, I need to look at the frequency. And the first one always starts with the first frequency, so this must be 44. 44 plus 65 gives us 109, so I know we did this correctly. Part B. What percentage of the people have exactly three siblings? So we look at the relative frequency column and we notice that the relative frequency is 0 0.208 and that is equivalent to 20.8%. We know 20.8% of individuals have exactly three siblings. Example with classes. The following data represents the age of 30 lottery winners. Complete the frequency distribution for the data. In this example, I want to use classes, which means we want a range of values for the data entries. So for the age, I notice that the lowest value is 20 and the highest value is 84. I'm going to construct my classes so I include the smallest and the lowest value. So let's start with the lower class limit of 20 up to 29. The lower class limit is the 20 and the upper class limit is the 29. For the next class, we're going to start at 30 to 39, then 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, and 80 to 89. Now these classes have to have the same width. So you can see that each of the classes has a width of 9 from 20 to 29, 30 to 39, each of these classes has the same width. The first number is the lower class limit, and the second number is called the upper class limit. And in order to calculate the frequency, we have to find how many data values are between 20 through 29. So for the first frequency, we'll count the values between 20 through 29. This one's between 20 through 29. And so we have a frequency of 2. And we can continue the process. So please pause the video and try to complete the frequency table. Let's go over the solution. We have a frequency of 4. We have a frequency of 8, we have a frequency of 2, we have a frequency of 10, 3, and finally a frequency of 1. Now I'm going to check my work. The total should be 30 lottery winners, so let's add up these numbers to make sure the total is equal to 30. And the total is equal to 30.